Greetings, everyone. My name is David Keplinger. I'm a poet here in the D.C. region, and I'm so honored tonight to join you all in helping to celebrate the poetry of my friend and colleague, Henry Crawford. Uh, Henry uh, is uh, an exquisite poet of many, many gifts, uh, so uh, it's, it's really a pleasure uh, to, uh, to join you all um, under the auspices of his reading. Uh, the poem that Henry's asked me to read is called Reading Emily Dickinson in Amherst, Massachusetts. It's a piece I wrote about a year ago when I was staying just down the street from the Dickinson house. And I got to tour the house a few times and tour the graveyard and to be near her um, in spirit. And there was a story that I had heard some years ago. I don't even know if it's true, uh, but it's where the poem began. And it was the idea that she would stand at the window and, and throw little scraps of paper, um, little, little mini poems uh, onto the lawn to people who were passing by. And I love the idea of Emily Dickinson at an open window. And I, I also love the idea of the recipients of her genius down below um, and, uh, and, and feel lucky to be one of those recipients uh, 160 years later. So this is again called Reading Emily Dickinson in Amherst, Massachusetts. I know how it feels to live in a small leaden room with only snakes and birds as consolation. I know how to imagine death by falling through stories of floorboards like a poem flutters through molecules, air, and time. It never lands in the yard. The trick is not to die while dreaming of death. That's why the circle of doors and windows here remain open a little. That's why the poems seem always to end on slant rhymes and dashes. That's why the hawthorn cone is never quite in full bloom, but almost. I too come here respectfully. I bow halfway at thresholds. I know how to sit at a completely empty window, holding out my hands. Thank you all for asking me to come, and, uh, and again, thanks Henry for making that request. Bye-bye, everyone.